today's class, we will finish module four. So we need to do quiz four for this module. Yeah. So this weekend, uh, expect uh, quiz number four. Uh, another thing, updates. Uh, remember, uh, we did homework assignment two, part eight, the first half. So we also need to do homework assignment second half, part, uh, part B of homework assignment number two. 12 questions. Uh, so we will practice uh, basic uh, query questions. 12 questions, all query questions. But the basic part, basic part, that's, that means uh, we only use uh, module four, you know, basic syntax in module four. Yeah. Module five, we will do complex part, complex queries. So module five, uh, we will do another 12 questions for complex part. Yeah. All right, yeah. So let's start uh, part D, MySQL regular expressions. I introduced, I talked about regular expressions before. Uh, at that time, we just did one simple example. So I want to show you a simple idea. Yeah. But today, we will look at more examples. Yeah. Today, I try to give you the you know, most commonly used features in regular expressions. Uh, not too many, yeah. only one slide. Yeah. So the pattern, the rules, patterns, you know, I, I just pick the most commonly used only in one style, one table in one slide. First, let me explain all those rules. Then we practice several questions. Yeah. All right. Patterns for regular expression. Yeah, let me first explain the patterns. Yeah. If you have the Unix background, uh, then this part you can easily uh, pick up yeah, because uh, pretty much the same. Yeah. All right. Yeah, look at the MySQL pattern match. Oh, remember, like operator we used before, right? Yeah, like operator. Usually, we do relatively simple pattern matching. Yeah. We match part of the strings. The pattern description, very simple. If you want to represent relatively complex patterns, then this method is not strong enough. Yeah. So then we should use this reg exp operator using regular expression, then we can describe a lot of details. Yeah. All right. Yeah. But some students may get confused. Yeah. So because uh, the, these two methods, when you describe the patterns, the syntax is quite different. Yeah. But sometimes the students mixed. Yeah. You know, that happens a lot. Yeah. Try to do not get confused, the syntax. Yep. All right, here, let me look at these patterns yep. in this table. Yep. All right. Do here. The first one. Yep. Left hand side patterns, right hand side pattern description. Explanations. Yeah. Let me, first, this veg symbol. Yeah. This hat or veg symbol. Yeah. Just this one. Okay. You can find find it in on the keyboard. Yeah. This one. You 
you provide information matching beginning of the string, beginning of the pattern string. Yeah. The first character, you want to describe the pattern for the first character and after, and, and starting from the first character, when you see this symbol. Yeah. But this symbol, later there is another meaning. Yeah. So in the regular expression, there are two different meanings for the symbol. And later we will see a different one. Yeah. So you need to, you know, try to avoid confusion. Yeah. Two different meanings. Then this dollar symbol, the end of string. Yeah. Just the opposite of this, you know, veg or hat symbol. Yeah. End of string. Yeah. So you want to describe a pattern that is, you know, touch the end of the string the string, yeah. yeah, matching the end of the st string, yeah, all right. Other than that, if you do not use these two symbols other than that, you just describe anywhere in the middle of the string, middle of the string, yeah, all right. Dot pattern, one dot, yeah, here the meaning in regular expression, the meaning could be different from the dot you used in other places. Yeah. In PHP, we use dot for the con concatenation, right? The dot, yeah. You know, and here we use dot to represent any single character. Yeah. Here, do not get confused with the like operator. Like operator we use question mark to represent any single character, right? Yeah. In regular expression, we use this dot symbol to represent any single character. Yeah. All right. Then, star, star symbol represent zero or more instance of Preceding element. Yeah. All right. So you put the star after certain pattern. So there is a specific pattern before the star. There, your star means the previous pattern should be repeated zero or more times, including the zero. Not repeated. Zero means no, no such pattern. Okay? Zero or more. So that's the star meaning. Okay, all right. Then, the plus, the meaning of plus. Yeah. Here the plus is not a concatenation. Yeah. The plus here, the meaning is one or more. Yeah. Just slightly different from that star. Star is zero or more. Yeah. But plus, sometimes you want to have you want to make the previous pattern to appear at least once. So you use the plus sign, one or more instance of preceding element. Yeah. That element yeah, refers to a pattern matching a portion of the string. That's the element. What do you mean element? Element may not be single character. Element, you can represent a pattern covering, covering multiple characters. Yeah. That, that unit, that pattern unit, we call the element. Yeah. All right. Then, bracket, inside bracket, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. The meaning, yeah. Any character, yeah. Actually, this dot 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 means you include a list of patterns inside a pair of brackets. Yeah. The dot dot dot, so you, you do not really use the dot dot dot. Actually, you need to provide the pattern description inside 
the brackets. Yeah. Any character listed between the brackets. For example, here I can use A, B, C, right? Yeah. I put the A, B, C inside a pair of brackets. That describes one single character that should be chosen from A or B or C. One of the three characters. The meaning. Okay? All right. Yeah. Another meaning, for example, you want to represent 0 9 inside bracket. Yeah. So you represent a single digit. That single digit ha comes from the range from 0 through 9. Yeah. You choose a single digit from 0 through 9. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. You use dash. Yeah. Covering consecutive characters in that range. All right? Similar lowercase character A dash Z. Okay? Yeah. So single character, there must be one of the 26 lowercase characters from A through Z. Yeah. Yeah. So that that kind of meaning. Okay? So that's the dot dot dot. So we need to put something there. Yeah. All right? Then, now, the second meaning of the veg symbol, yeah, yeah, or hat symbol, yeah, that must be the first character inside a pair of brackets. If you see that, yeah, it must be used associated with a pair of brackets. If you see that, that means negation, not, not. You do not choose from the list. Not in the list. Yeah. Negation. Okay? Yeah. Any character not listed between the brackets. Not listed between the brackets. Yeah? See? Any character not listed between the brackets. Yeah? So two different meanings for the symbol. So when you have more experience, you won't get confused. Yeah. So you can separate these two meanings yeah, easily. Yeah. All right. Then, vertical bar. Vertical bar to separate different patterns. P1 means pattern 1. P2, pattern 2. And so on. Okay. So you use vertical bars to separate a list of patterns. Usually, these patterns are included inside a pair of bracket. Yeah. Alternation matches any of the patterns. Yeah. Yeah. Vertical bar. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the first one, the, in this example, we do not use vertical bar. Yeah. We still, we won't get confused. Okay, one of the three characters. But if you use vertical bar, the same thing. C, yeah, the same meaning. Okay, one of the three patterns should be matched for a single character. Yeah, all right. Then two more. A pair of curly bra braces around N. N is specific integer, all right? N refers to some integer number. Yeah, not, the, not this literal N, okay? This N is the concrete integer number. Yeah, three, four, some number, okay? N instances of preceding element. The preceding element, that pattern should be repeated this many times. That's the meaning of this N. Yeah. All right. Another one. Inside a pair of curly braces, two integers, M 
comma n. Yeah. Then you have a range. Yeah. In this one, m through n instances of preceding element. Yeah. Minimum repeated m times. Maximum repeated n times. Yeah. So the number should be between m and n inclusive. Yeah, that's the meaning. Yeah. All right. So here you can see that's these simple basic patterns, regular expression we will, you know, use and practice for this class. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, there are too many. Okay. Yeah. It's hard to cover, you know, many. Here you just get an idea. After this topic, learning, yeah, so you, you get idea and experience about using regular expressions in SQL queries. Yeah. Later, when you need to do more, so you just find some online document to give you more pattern descriptions. Yeah. All right, now, after that, let us do some practice. Let us use a few examples to explain how to use patterns. Yeah. All right. D point two examples for regular expressions. Yeah. All right. Number one, look at this question. Retrieve the query description, query statement, yeah, here. Retrieve all employees whose address is in Houston, Texas. Yeah. We know in the employee table, there is an address field. Yeah. So you need to get the address content. But after you retrieve the address content, you need to match this pattern, the pattern. Houston, Texas, this pattern. If it is matched, then you select it. Otherwise, you do not select it. Okay? Yeah. All right. Here, before I give you the query statement, yeah, let me mention one uh, mistake, one you know, that mistake, uh, a few students did it a few times before. Yeah, so let me, at this point, uh, let, for all the students, yeah, let me talk about that special uh, mistake. Yeah. All right. So remember, for homework assignment, to part of B, yeah, I will give you this weekend, okay? That's homework two, part of B. Yeah. You will have 12 query questions. Query questions, okay? All right. When you answer those query questions, so each question, I give you query statement like this one, okay? Yeah, I give you a sentence. Describe the business requirements. That's the business requirement description. Yeah. Then you need to write SQL query statement. Select statement. SQL query statement. Yeah. Yeah. To produce the result of that. Yeah. Here, let me tell you a common error. Some students, they understand in a different way. They didn't give me the query statements. Yeah. What they did, they look at the database. Yeah. Remember, we have a database company. They use their eyes to examine the data and select, use their eyes. They do not run the queries. Use their eyes to find those rows that satisfy condition there, copy and Give that to me. You, you should not do it in that way. 
Okay? Because that will, you get a zero point. Zero point. Yeah. Here, I do not, I do, I do not want you to give me the query result. Yeah. I want you to give me the query statements. Okay? Those query statements would produce the result. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully this semester nobody did that, will do that, that mistake. Yeah. Last semester one student did that. Yeah. One student did that last semester. Okay? Yeah. All right. Look at the answer. Yeah. Select F name, comma, L name from employee table. Yeah. Then our pattern description in this where clause, where address first. Yeah. Here we use two different ways. Yeah. First, we use the like operator. Second, we use the regular expression way. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because you want to match part of the string in the middle. Yeah. Left, left, left hand side, left side of this substring, Houston, comma, Texas. Anything could be matched. So you use the percent sign. Yeah. Then after TX, anything can be matched. So another percent sign. Yeah. Very simple, like operator. So that's, that's the way you use, okay? All right. Because this pattern is simple. All right. Let us try, if we use the regular expression, what is the syntax? Yeah. All right. Yeah, so first, we use the reg exp operator. Then, we only describe the portion of the pattern that should be matched. So here you can see, we do not describe the left sub pattern, left side pattern, right side pattern, nothing. Okay? Yeah. Inside the quotes, we only specify the string portion that should be matched. Houston, comma, TX. Before Houston, we say nothing. If we say nothing, that means anything can be matched. Yeah. We do not specify any restriction. That means anything could appear at the left side of Houston string. Yeah. Similarly, the right side of TX, anything could be matched at the right side of TX. Yeah, so that's the regular expression syntax. Okay, yeah. yeah. Try to distinguish, yeah. you know, like operator, regular expression operator, you know, yeah. Idea, yeah. Approach, different, yeah. All right. Yeah, but here, uh, some detail you may like to address, yeah, because for the real world data, for the real world data, think about after Houston comma, there could be a space character, right? So usually when we write address, people may put a space character. Yeah, think about sometimes. There is a space character. Sometimes there is no space character. Yeah. So we may like to in accept, include both cases. Yeah. 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 Because you don't want to reject, right? Yeah. So if our users enter the address not putting a space character between city and state, you do not want to reject it, right? Yeah. yeah. With or without a space, you don't want to reject it. You want to accept it. Yeah. Yeah, because you feel, you know, it's good enough for the data entry, right? Yeah. So in that way, how do you include both cases? Yeah. 
if for like operator, you probably you need to write two cases separately and use all operator to combine them, right? Or yeah, first pattern or second pattern. Yeah, so you cover both. Yeah, all right. Regular expression, you have a chance to use one single pattern to represent both cases. Yeah. So here, just to let you know, you can describe much more details if you use the regular expression syntax patterns. Yeah. All right. Now here, look at the way, the specific way I want to talk about. Yeah. All right. Remember a pair of curly braces, two numbers M and N, right? In our previous table, we we use this pattern. Yeah. M and N. Yeah. M starting with M number and with N number. Okay? So here M number is zero. That means no space character. Yeah. Here because there is a space character before it. Yeah. Here there is a space character before this curly braces. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. And zero, no space. One, one space character. Yeah. So in this way, you can represent the details. Yeah. All right. That's our first example. Second example. Question. Retrieve all employees whose address is in California and the street number has exact three digits. Yeah. Yeah. The California part, easy, right? CA. Yeah. CA. So you just want to match capital address, the state part, capital CA. Yeah. All right. That could be the end of the string, right? Yeah. For example, yeah, if the address format, the state information, two characters appears at the end of the string. Yeah, you may use that information if you want. Okay? All right. Then the main part is how to describe string number with exact three digits. So one digit repeated three times, right? Single digit repeated three times. Yeah. But no more than that. Not more than three. Not, not more than three. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's look at, yeah. Here, the regular expression. Yeah. All right. Look at. First, we know the string number appears at the beginning of the address. So we specify this beginning of the string character, that veg hat sign. Yeah. All right. Digit, single digit 0 dash 9. That's the single digit, the range for a single digit. Then after cur inside curly braces, we repeat the previous pattern th three times. Yeah. But after we repeat three times, we don't want to see another character after the first three digits. So we need to put a space character there. Yeah, because after three digits, we want to see a space character. Okay, all right. Then after the space character dot dot any character after the space character dot okay then that dot repeated zero or more times yeah star means zero or more times okay all right then after that capital C A the state information yeah but that Information should be at the end of the string, dollar sign, dollar sign, 
tells the DBMS. Now, that's the end. After CA, there is no other string characters. Okay? Yep. So that's the representation. Okay? Here you can see we use several rules about the regular expressions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In our homework assignment to part B, yeah. so you will see several questions of using regular expressions. Yeah, yeah probably four, four or five. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So because you need to get some experience, practice. Yeah. All right. Here, do not use percent. Yeah, because if some student yeah may get confused. Yeah. So using symbols from other te technologies, yeah. other technologies, not regular expressions from other technologies. Yeah. That could happen. Yeah. yeah. All right. A another question. Retrieve all employees whose first name starts with A, B, or C. Yeah. It's simple. One of the three characters, A, B, or C, the first name, yeah. starts. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the name, reg express, star, how do you represent star? Yeah, first character, yeah. So the, the beginning of the string character, okay? After it, three possible characters you want to choose. Here you use vertical bars to specify one of the three patterns, one of the three patterns, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah, so it can also be, yeah, yeah, because, yeah, sometimes uh, parenthesis, a pair of parenthesis, yeah, 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 so the DBMS also understands what do you want to do, okay, all right, so there are several different ways you can use. Yeah. All right. Because they are consecutive, so you can use dash. Yeah. Consecutive. If you jump, then you cannot use dash. Okay? If you provide several characters skipping a few characters between them, then you have to specify. Yeah. You cannot use dash. Yeah. All right. Then Examples of regular expressions. Another question. Retrieve all employees whose last name has exactly six characters. Yeah. So this time, last name, exactly three, uh, six characters. Yeah. How to represent that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you have several ways to represent. Okay. All right. Here, the first way. Last name, yeah. You match from beginning to end, right? Yeah. Start and end, you match both. So you want to describe the whole string. Yeah. So you include the symbols, beginning, symbol, and symbol, dollar sign, beginning, that veg sign, all right? Dot, arbitrary character, dot. After the beginning sign, then repeat it six times. Six times. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Exactly six times. So this is one possible way you can do it. Yeah. Another way, yeah, another way, People in this situation, people also use the length function. In MySQL, there is a length function. When you have a string, you can retrieve, you can calculate the length of the string. So you use length function. Yeah. 
If you use length function, you just write, yeah. So where, after where, you call the length function of last name, L name, equals six. Yeah, so you get the same thing, yeah. Length function, okay, yeah. Yeah, so many times you have more than one solutions. You just, when you have multiple ways to solve a problem, uh, usually you want to pick the relatively easier one, simpler one. Yeah. Yeah. Try to make it as simple as possible. Okay? All right. And easier to understand. Also important. Yeah. When you write a query statement, so you want to make it easier to understand by other people. Yeah. Yeah. That's also important. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, because when I did grading, I saw uh, many queries extremely complicated. Okay, not efficient. Yeah. Very complicated. Yeah. That could happen in our second query assignments. The first one, simple, basic, so usually they are not very complicated. But second part, we will write complex queries. Then, you know, answers. Many students could write very complicated answer statements. Yeah. 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 If it's possible, you try to use relatively simpler way to write. Okay? All right. Another question. Yeah. This time, retrieve all employees whose last name starts with character that cannot be any of. Yeah. Here, read the question carefully. This time, cannot be. Yeah. So you want to use the negation symbol, not from the list, any character in the list, yeah, all right, so we, this time, here you can see that hat sign, hat sign, we use two places, yeah. first, beginning of the string, second, inside a pair of brackets, not, yeah, so that, the meaning is not, okay, do not get confused, yeah, this example, so you can see two different meanings appear in this pattern. Yeah. Not any of the J, S, or W. Okay? Yeah? So that's simple. Yeah. All right. Then, more examples. Yeah. Question. Retrieve all employees who were born in 1970s. This time we need to use the birth date, the date, inside the employee table. Yeah. Yeah. But the birthday, we want to match the year number, year number, 1970, 1970. But after seven, any number is okay. 1970s, right? So 197, any digit after 7. Yeah. All right. So let's write it. Yeah. All right. So B date, yeah. so we know the year number appears at the beginning of the date data, date value. Yeah. So we match the beginning three digits 197. Yeah. After that, that, anything could be matched. Yeah. Yeah. But we assume, here you can safely assume the format of birthday is correct. Yeah. Is correct. Yeah. So you do not worry about, you know, the, you know, some, some strains that are not of the date format. Yeah. So no such thing. Yeah. 
All right. Another question. Retrieve all employees whose address contains a dollar sign. So here, this dollar sign, we don't want to use it for the end of the string symbol. We want to use this literal dollar sign. Okay? We want to use this dollar sign literally. Literal dollar sign. Okay? Yeah. So how to represent a special symbol as the liter literal character for some special symbol? Yeah, sometimes we need to do that. Yeah. How do we escape the special meaning of the symbol, dollar sign symbol here? All right, yeah. Here, in regular expression, we use double backslash to escape it. Yeah. Backslash, we know it's a special symbol. Yeah. Yeah, but here, double backslash. Yeah. If you use sing single, yeah, it won't work. Yeah. You need to use double backslash to show a special symbol with its literal meaning. Literal meaning. All right. Another question. Retrieve all employees whose address does not contain a dollar sign. No dollar sign. Okay? Yeah? Yeah. So you can describe in different ways. Yeah. Here. You, based on your understanding, yeah. you may have different ways to understand the statement, the requirement. Here, do not contain a dollar sign. Yeah. First, you can describe a character which is not of the dollar sign. Yeah. We know how to do it. Negation, that way. Negate this dollar sign. Then, the pattern repeated you know, any number of times. For the whole string, for the whole string, okay? Yeah, that, that's the way, yeah. All right, so here, another way, yeah, here, yeah. Probably more, much easier, use this not regular expression. So you negate, that is better, that is better. So you match that dollar sign, as in the previous example, yeah, it matches. Then you negate it. You use not operator to negate it. Not, not that. That means not matching. Yeah. So that way, much easier. Yeah. Because some students, they use the positive way. Positive way. Not the negation way. Not, not negation way. Then it's a little harder. Because you need to describe the whole string, right? You know, anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Here, not. So you only need, so you get that part first, then not that. Yeah. So this method, also very useful, not operator. Yeah. Useful. All right. Yeah. So then, another example. So this time, retrieve. All employees whose address contains exact one dot. Dot is a special character, yeah, but here we want to use the literal dot. So double backslash. Double backslash to escape this dot special symbol. Yeah, all right. Exact one dot. No. How do you represent exact one dot? Yeah. First, you need to have at least one. Second, you cannot have more than one, right? You cannot have two or more. Yeah. So based on your understanding, you can write this query statement in several different ways. Yeah. All right. Note, yeah. 
Yeah. So similar to what we escape the dollar sign here, we escape the dot sign. Yeah. How to represent exact one? Yeah. At this point, we, if you apply our previous several examples, yeah, you may have different ideas to represent exact. Okay? Yeah. yeah. One way, straightforward way, you describe the one dot pattern, then it's the left part, no dot contained, right part, no dot contained. Yeah, that's the first straightforward way, for example. Second, yeah, some students also did a did some way uh, that make it very easy to understand. So that is, first, you need to match at least one dot character in your string. At least one dot. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, one dot. Second, you use that not operator. Not to, okay? So you describe a string pattern containing two different, two dots. Two dots, okay? Not necessarily adjacent, usually not adjacent. Two dots anywhere. You just describe the two dots in that string. Okay? Yeah. After that, not that. Yeah. So you don't want to match a string with at least two dots. Okay? Your pattern, your description, you can cover, you can describe exact one dot. Okay? Yeah. That's also a good way. Good way, yeah. Use that not operator. Yeah. That can make the your statement much easier to understand. Yeah. Very straightforward. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. So that yeah, so that those examples should be enough for this class. Yeah. yeah. So definitely uh there are much more there are much more than these patterns yeah but but good enough so you understand how to use this technology right in sql yeah. 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 because if you want to expand your knowledge it's very easy you can find some online Documents, examples, so you can do more than that. Yeah. Yeah. Here, you just get a basic understanding of this knowledge. Okay. All right. Then, yeah. the last topic of today, D point three, no value and the table join. Yeah. No value. Yeah. We learn a little bit. No value. Yeah. 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 No value for. Join attributes. Yeah. All right. When a join condition is specified, tuples with no values for the join attributes are not included in the result. Yeah. So yeah. that's so here. Yeah. When I talk about this, this join. Remember. Yeah. One student uh, asked me. <coughs> one question before <clears throat> that student asked me about the join several join types here this join we are talking about default join yeah we know there are several join types default join that means the inner join inner join Inner join, outer join. Yep. Inner join, default join. Yep. So then we have this, this rule. 
No values for the join attributes are not included in the result. Yeah? Okay? Yeah. Tuples with no values for the join attributes. Okay? Yeah. Here. Also, we talk about for the join attributes. For non-join attributes, they could be included, right? Yeah. For non-join tuples with no values for non-join attributes can be included. Yeah. Only tuples for the join attributes are not included. Yeah. So that's the inner join, default join case. Yeah. For other join, it's not. Other join, we will include. Yeah. Even the null value for the join attributes, we also include. So that's the outer join, okay? Yeah, we will see that later. Yeah, yeah, unless it is an outer join, okay? Left outer join, right outer join, then our rules are different. Yeah, we will get there. Left outer join, right outer join. Yeah. Here, the first sentence, that's for the inner join, default join. If people do not specify inner join, outer join, that means inner join. Okay? The default join is inner join. Yeah. All right. When no values are involved in attributes, yeah. compare. Yeah. yeah, so here. Here, let me give you a special case how to make the query result different. If no values appear in your query results. Yeah. Sometimes you will see different results. We have no values. Yeah. Here, look at this example. My table. Yeah. Just a table name. Yeah. My table. Okay? All right. Then we apply this count function. Aggregate count function. Later, we will have a topic covering all the aggregate functions. Aggregate functions. Yeah, later. Yeah. Here, this count is our first aggregate function. Count the number of rows. Yeah. In this table, you count number of rows. Okay. Total number of rows. Yeah. Star. Count star. Yeah. And returns. All the rows. Yeah. All right. And now, that's another way to count the number of rows. Okay, all right. So this time, the same table, my table, but when I apply count function, I apply it on a column name, one of the column name in the table. Compare the difference. These two select statement. Yeah. Two versions, we apply the same count function, but one star. Yeah. Star, we do not specify you know, any field. You know, star, you know, the general total number of rows. Yeah. Second, we specify one particular column, column names. Yeah. These two statements could return different results. <clears throat> if no values are involved, if no null values, yeah, if this table does not contain any null value, yeah, then same. Yeah. But if null values appear in this column, you will see the result different. If null values appear in my column, those rows are not included. Those rows with null values in my column, they won't be counted. They won't be counted, okay, for the second version. But the first version, null that, yeah, because star does not specify any column, column name, right? Yeah, the star, you know, arbitrary. There, there, all the rows included. So we, we cover all the rows. Yeah. 
Okay? All right. Yeah. So here, consider, consider our employee table. So here, we test it using our company database, employee table. Employee table for the supervisor underscore SSN, there are several employees there Super underscore SN is no value. No value. Okay? Yeah. So then you will see the difference. You will see the difference. Yeah. All right. And another one, star employee. So we count all the rows. Yeah. When you run these two queries, you will see two different numbers return. Okay? All right. The first one, you see 33. 33 employees who have specific super underscore SSN numbers. Not at all. Okay? Seven, seven employees, they have no values for the super underscore SSN. Yeah. So the star version, a total number of employees, 40. Super underscore that conversion, excluding the seven employees whose super underscore SSN value is not excluded. Okay? Yeah. So that's the difference. Yeah. So that tells you how these null values could, you know, cause different query results. Yeah. Yeah. Here, simple example. All right, yeah. All right, yeah. Here I finished the you, yeah this topic, and uh, also I finish uh, module four. Yeah. And, uh, next time we will start module five, complex queries. And also the other than complex query, another important topic, uh, indexing. So two topics in module five, uh, complex queries and hashing. Uh, not, yeah, not hashing. Hashing included inside indexing. Indexing, we mainly use binary search, uh, but small cases, binary search does not work. Then we will use hashing technique. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the topic of module five. Yeah. There, after module five, uh, Module six, module six, I do not have the uh, regular content. Basically, we do review for the final, and also we do some help session for the project. Yeah. Review final and the project, yeah. module six. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so this weekend, another thing, uh, other than what I said at the beginning of this class, Quiz four and homework assignment two, part B. I, I, I will also post, yeah, post the description of project two. Yeah, project two. Last time I talked about, uh, I will add a new feature, new feature about uh, batch insertion, right? Yeah, batch insertion. Enter data from a batch file, from a batch file, that functionality. Okay. I, I will modify my project description to add that feature, that interesting feature. So for project two, basically, I may do it this way. Yeah. For half of the project, I give you my code, but I give you my code covering the features for half of the project to, to get you started. Yeah. Some Students, you may not be familiar with the PHP programming and the database P programming. So I use the first half project code to help those students get ready to write a PHP code. Then after you get familiar, understand the syntax, yeah, you practice a little bit, then you complete the second half of the features. Okay, so first half, I explain the code. Okay, 
I explain the code details. Yeah. I may use this way. Plus, uh, I will use about 10 minutes to explain the code. Yeah. I do not want to spend too much time each class. Yeah. So for each class, I, I want to make sure I use one hour to cover our lecture content. One hour, exact one hour. Okay? So the time more than one hour I use to talk about project. Okay? I explain the syntax code you know, uh, for the project. Yeah. And the run demo. Yeah. So next time I give you the, my first sample code. Sample code. So after you download, you can run. Then you see the data display. So the first sample code, we display the data okay, of five tables. You click one of the five tables, you display data for that table yeah, to get it started. So that code, okay? Yeah. So next time, I will do that. Yeah. Yeah. But I will control to leave one hour for our normal lecture. Okay? Yeah. That part controlled around 10 minutes, around 10 minutes, yeah. but we need to have one hour time for the lecture. All right? Okay, yeah, so that's it. Yeah, so we stop right here. Yeah.